County is now in session. We have uh, one matter on our virtual uh, docket uh, morning, and that is the continuation of the Brown adversary. Okay. Um, we've had several settings of this hearing at this point, and we know that the we've had confirmation that the parties have been served. And um, at this point in time, I'd like to say that they haven't shown proof of indigence. They haven't shown any proof of interest. And I would ask that um, the court take that into account as we go forward. In order to have attorneys appointed, they would have to show proof of indigence at some point, and they have not done that. And I think we've had three or four settings. All right, thank you, Ms. Dick. And um, I'll take responses um, as soon as Mr. Kirkwood is here. So while while we're waiting, uh, let me call for uh, the parents. mother, Desiree Brown, present. Desiree Brown, Desiree Brown. If you're appearing virtually, ma'am, you'll need, well, everyone is by agreement. Uh, you'll need to unmute your device. If you're on the phone, though I don't see it, no one's in the waiting room. Well, now someone is and I'm bringing them in, them in. So let me pause. All right. Once again, calling for the mother, Desiree Brown. Desiree Brown, Desiree Brown, if you're on the phone, ma'am, uh, press star six to unmute, announce your appearance. Otherwise, unmute your dev device and announce your appearance, Desiree Brown. Desiree Brown, Desiree Brown. All right. Next to the father, Brady Brown. Brady Brown, Brady no Brown. Currently in the waiting room. Um, who is on uh, phone number last three, eight, five, six? That's me, Your Honor, Keaton Kirkwood. Okay, very good, Mr. Kirkwood. Thank you. Okay, let's um, start with uh, Ms. McGee and any response to um, Ms. Dick's uh, concerns, her point earlier. Um, yes, Your Honor. I would argue that her um, objection um, to this is untimely at this point. We've already started the adversary hearing. So I think it'd be unfair, um, not just to uh, my client to not be represented now in the middle of a hearing. Um, also, Judge, I did receive a copy of their return of service. Um, I did not see what attachments were provided um, when my client was served. I am not for certain that she actually got notice of the actual hearing. So she wouldn't have even had an opportunity to appear to do that um, at that time, Judge. And unless Ms. Dick can show otherwise, I don't, I don't see, I have a copy of the return, but I don't see that she was actually served with notice of the actual um, initial hearing, Judge. Okay, uh, thank you. And let's go around and we'll um, get any response uh, from you, Ms. Dick. Uh, but let me go to Ms. Moore and then Mr. Keating. Uh, Mr. Kirkwood, and then back to uh, Ms. Dick. Can you hear me? I, I can now, yes. Mm -hmm. um, Judge, I would just make the same argument that Ms. McGee made. In addition to that, the department has um, made a point to bring up that there's been previous cases, and we all know that in previous cases, these parents were indigent. I, I think it would be a stretch to think that they're situation had changed such that they would not qualify as indigent any longer. All right. Thank you, Ms. Moore. Mr. Kirkwood? Your Honor, I wasn't on when uh, the objection was had, but I can, from what I gather, um, I think I'll, I'll just allow the court to to make the decision. Uh, we have started the hearing, and the, the, the parents have been found injured in the past, and however, we're not aware of of their current status right now. So I'll let the court make its decision. All right. And so um, I believe uh, Ms. Ms. Dix, uh, what Ms. Dick brought up uh, was that um, the parents have not appeared uh, in opposition to the suit, uh, nor uh, have they demonstrated <clears throat> under oath their, their indigence. Um, is that correct, Ms. Dick? And therefore, they're not entitled to court-appointed attorneys. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. I will say, too, that um, Ms. Price originally, my understanding is that she originally uh, provided the paperwork to them. Um, 
and I have no reason to believe that they were not notified of each hearing. I could take a possible testimony from uh, the caseworker on that, but. Um, when, when you say Ms. Price, um, is that the invest? Who, who is Ms. Price? Price is the investigator, Your Honor. The the investigator. Can I get <laughs> clarification on that, Judge? Well, um, what what I want clarification on is. By paperwork, uh, did that include affidavits of indigence? In in your in your point, Ms. Dick, <clears throat> I would need to ask Ms. Price on that. I I'm unable to look at anything on my computer right now to check that, Your Honor. It's barely <laughs> functioning right at the moment. But okay, okay, um, Ms. Ms. Moore. Well, I just want to get clarification because she said that she. Uh, had no reason to believe that they weren't notified of each hearing. So I didn't know if that meant that Ms. Price has had contact with them between the last hearing and this one to let them know about this hearing date. Uh, Ms. Dick, you may proceed. Okay. And um, have you had contact or have you made contact with the parties um, to tell them the dates of the first hearing? Did you make contact? Uh, no, ma'am. The paperwork I gave them was the notification of removal of the child. Okay, I see. And did you have any contact with them between the first and second hearing? No, ma'am. All right. No further questions. Thank you. Okay. Uh, before we'll go to Ms. McGee, of course, next. Uh, but before we do that, um, just to uh, announce that we are proceeding uh, virtually um, this morning uh, by agreement uh, and pursuant to the Texas Government Code. So section uh, with that, uh, Ms. McGee, uh, you may uh, proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Excuse me. And Ms. Price, just to um, confirm, did you provide an affidavit of indigence um, to the parents? And you're mm -hmm. on mute, Ms. Price. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, no, ma'am. Thank you. I'll pass the witness, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. And so, Ms. Price, did you meet with the parents in person? Uh, when I gave them the removal paperwork, uh, when I had them sign it, yes. And where did you meet with them and when? Um, I don't remember the date, um, but it was at their uh, RV uh, at the residence, their residence listed. All right. And... Um, you you believe that they both lived there together? They were both both there at the time. Right. Did you see any vehicles there other than yours? Um, yes, sir. The the their RV is actually behind a trailer in the back. All right. Did you see any, you know, automobiles? Yes, sir. There was automobiles there. Okay. But I don't know who they belong to. Okay. All right. Uh, did did either parent tell you um, whether they were employed? No, sir. I didn't ask. What, what time of the day did you meet with them? I think it was the morning time. If I'm not mistaken. Okay. All right. And did did either of them give you any indication whatsoever? Uh, whether they were uh, in agreement with or in opposition to the department's lawsuit. Uh, would you please repeat that, sir? At any time, did either parent give you any indication whether they were in agreement or in opposition to uh, the removal and the department's lawsuit? Um, I didn't... Um... Uh, neither or they just signed the paperwork. All right. Ms. Moore. I, I, I'm sorry. I informed them what the paperwork was for and um, and then uh, they signed the paperwork. W without saying anything else. Well, no, um, Mr. Brady, um, he did say some stuff and so did she. But I mean, it wasn't uh, for or against the removal. OK, what what was it they did say starting with ms brown oh, okay um i'm trying to remember what she said um mr brown came to the door first um 
when she he called her to the door and um I explained to her what it was for and honestly sir I, and now that I think about it, I don't remember what she said but her and I stood there and talked for a few minutes all right do you remember anything um Mr. Brown might have said yes sir I do um he indicated that he wasn't sure he was the father so he didn't know why he was getting the paperwork All right. Um, okay, Ms. Moore. Uh, Ms. Price, aren't you required by your policy to document every contact that you have? Yes, ma'am. Did you document that contact? Yes, I believe so. In that documentation, did you put down what the parents said? Oh, uh, I'm not sure. I would have to go back and look at the contact. I'm sorry. Have, can you go ahead and look at that contact? How long will that take you? Um, I am not. Let me see. Ms. Ms. Dick, who is your, let me interrupt you, Ms. Dick, who is your representative because the rule has been previously invoked? Is it Ms. Mays? I'm sorry, Your Honor, I'm having trouble even getting the, one second, please. It keeps going on and off. Um, Ms. Mays is my contact and <clears throat> there is documentation of the... Well, what I'm, what I'm wondering for the purposes of the rule having been invoked previously is ms mays uh, your representative to be in the courtroom she is my my representative your honor okay um ms ms croft ms sample guardian ad litems uh, ms mays representative that's mr kirkwood there that's our clerk that's our witness uh i have um placed ms vn and ms jessica thompson uh in the in the virtual uh waiting room uh pursuant to the rule Okay, um, so and any, is, I'm sorry, is Jessica the witness that Ms. McGee had? Is she on? She is in the virtual waiting room. Thank well, you. thank you. I, I don't, it, there is a Jessica Thompson. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, Ms. Moore, did you finish your questioning of Ms. Price? I did not. You may, you may continue. Um, can you look back at your notes? Yes, ma'am. I'm trying to, um... Did you review them before you test we're here to testify today? No, ma'am, I did not. I wasn't, uh, let's see here. I'm sorry, I'm trying to, trying to find it. Well, don't uh, read or testify from it, but you may look at it, use it just to just to refresh your memory. And so one right. thing that let us know. Okay, I am in it. I'm sorry, I'm reading over it now. Yes, I did uh, put that in my contact, ma'am. Okay, so what conversation or what statements did uh, the mother in this case tell you? Um, she actually um, said, I asked her about another placement for the child, and she said that she had provided one, which was Miss um, Bowyer, and I explained to her that she did not meet the standards okay. of CPU. I'm sorry. Hold on. Not what you explained. I want to know what she said. So she said she had another placement available. She did. Okay, and then what did she say after that? Uh, um, well, I don't know exactly what, what she said after that. You didn't document what she said after that? Um, our conversation mainly revolved around that. Um, and I, I actually, I did ask her, uh, to ask her if she was going to be coming to court Monday. And she said she didn't know if she had to work. Okay. But, I did not, but my, I did but my not question document. was, did you not document any of the other statements that she made? I didn't document the, the fact that she had to go to work. No, I don't see that in here. So you're saying that a few minutes ago, you couldn't remember anything that you said, and now you can remember something that wasn't documented? No, ma'am. What I'm saying is, is a while ago, I couldn't remember what I said, but since I have glanced over my contact, I am uh, reminded of that day. So you're reminded I, of a statement. Wait, 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 hold on. You're reminded of a statement that you didn't document. Is that what you're saying? I'm reminded of the conversation we had. Okay. Was that statement documented? Which statement, ma'am? That she had to go to work no that was not documented. okay so you are reminded now of a statement that wasn't documented what date was that um i dated it 
on 12-8. But over a month, almost two months old. Yes. Okay. And so you didn't document any other statements that she made? Uh, no, ma'am. And did you document any statements that my client made? Yes. Okay. Well, what did my client say? Um, I documented the statement where he stated that he didn't think he was the father. Okay. Did you document any other statements by him? Yes. He asked for a paternity test. Okay. Did you document any other statements by him? Um, no, just what I explained. I'll pass the witness. All right. Thank you, Mr. Kirkwood. <clears throat> No questions, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Back to you, Ms. Dick. Um, <clears throat> Sorry, I just need a moment. Does uh, attorneys, uh, does anyone have any uh, more information on Mr. Brown's uh, paternity? Is there an AOP? Are they married? I believe they're they are married, married, Judge. I do Your not Honor. have proof of marriage. I'm looking through our um, information to see if there is a marriage certificate, and I haven't found it yet. So I would like to have an opportunity to verify that. I have not been able to verify that they're married. And judge, I don't, as far as her having an opportunity, judge, this case is two months old. I think there's been plenty of opportunity. I don't know whether or not the department has looked into whether there is an AOP, but I'm certainly interested to know if they've done that. I'd be happy to call Ms. Mays. Okay. Any, any more questions of Ms. Price? I I judge, like, oh, I'm sorry. I'd like the opportunity to recall Ms. Price when I can. Or if I, when I need to. Thank you. Okay. Right now, any other questions of Ms. Price? Yes, Your Honor, just one very briefly. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Price, when you spoke with Ms. Brown about Ms. Boulier, did she go into um, detail to you about the arrangements that they had made? No, ma'am. All right, I'll pass the witness, Your Honor. Ms. Ms. McGee and Ms. Moore, um, do you all have good contact information for for your clients? No, I, Judge. I, I believe I do, Your Honor. She has been responding to me. All right. Let's um. Let's take a ten minute recess. See if we can get the parents here virtually. If the department has any contact information for my client, I'd appreciate it if they'd share that. Well, my if, um, is that they didn't have a. Ms. Uh, Price, Ms. Price, Ms. Mays, if, if you all have any contact information uh, for uh, for the father, please forward it to your attorney right now so that uh, she might forward it to Ms. Moore. Now, it might be it, it, there's some some evidence that the parents uh, live together. So uh, perhaps perhaps mom can uh, be a source or a conduit uh, to getting a hold of the father. So, and I understand the mother, the mother might be at work at this time, but maybe by way of text. So we'll take a 10 minute break, see if we can get them to appear uh, virtually. Thank you. Any update, Ms. McGee, Ms. Moore? Um, yes, Your Honor. Um, I did try to call my client. Um, I wasn't able to speak to her over the phone. However, she did respond to my text. Uh, she did tell me that um, her service is bad right now due to the weather um, and that her phone is a little messed up. Um, I did ask her if it was possible for me to, um, a little later today, maybe send her the um, affidavit via email. And I would possibly probably have to put it in a format so that she can do it, fill it out electronically, Your Honor. But she did say, yes, she can get that. She could fill that out and send that back to me. And she provided me with her email address. 
So um, with that, Your Honor, I would just ask if it's possible to reset this so that I can either um, get this affidavit filled out or um, secure her appearance here to do it in person. Um, she did not tell me um, that she wasn't going to be here today before now. Um, so I didn't think to provide that for her, Judge, but uh, she did say she could fill one out and get it back to me, Judge. So I would just like an opportunity um, to provide that to her to get that filled out before she goes without representation, Your Honor. All right. So as, as to securing her virtually this morning, at least for the purpose of, a, of an indigency hearing, the chances of that, you would say, are what? Unlikely, Your Honor, because I couldn't even get her on the phone to talk. She was saying that her phone is not okay. working, that she has right. bad service. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Ms. Ms. Moore, And you'll need to unmute. I still have not been provided a contact information for my client. However, now that I am aware that the department has an address where he may be staying or may be found, I have the ability to go there and look for him. I did not have that information prior to Ms. Price's testimony today. So I guess at the court, we're going to give time for Ms. McGee to try to get her client to do the entity form. That would also give me time to go and see if I can find him at that location, if the department will tell me the address. And I've thought that, I know I sent that address to Ms. McGee. I thought it, I also sent it to Ms. Moore a, couple, a week or so ago. And I can double check, Jerome. I just don't recall seeing okay. it, but it's possible I've overlooked it. Okay. And... And Ms. Moore, I'll I'll leave it up to you and Ms. McGee to discuss whether or not uh, mom's contact information, phone number, uh, would be helpful to getting a hold of your client, Mr. Brown. Um, okay, uh, Mr. Kirkwood, uh, anything uh, from you at this point? No, no, Your Honor, I have nothing. Okay, is um, and I'll I'll put this question to to you and to Casa. Are there any concerns with the current placement? Um, is the current placement meeting all the needs of the child? And is there anything in that regard of which the court needs to be made aware of today? I don't have cost to go first, Judge. I don't, I don't believe there is, but I'll, I'll have cost to speak. All right. All right. I can um, testify if need be only by reading the advocate's notes. Okay, let, let's, okay, I appreciate that. Let, let's give her one more, um, or, or a moment to uh, to log back in. Ms. Dick, um, under the circumstances, I'm inclined, uh, I'm inclined to continue the hearing. That's fine, Your Honor. I'm, my computer was working perfectly last night, and it is not working perfectly now, so it has been a hardship this morning to get information. And, um, I'm not absolutely certain that the parents were appointed attorneys last time. Um, in the initial order, they were not. Um, I have a copy of the termination order, but I can't get to it easily at the moment. We were appointed last time. Uh, the judge allowed us to come off the case prior to the final trial, but we were there. Okay. Is that the one where you all filed your uh, due diligence reports and so on? Yes. And that was for Ray. Yes, yeah. and I've checked my email, and I don't have an email from you, Jerome, with the address. So if you could send that to me, that would be helpful. Okay, the address is in the affidavit. That's the only one? There's not another one? No. Okay. Um, but it is, and that's what I recall, um, and it may have just been something that I let Miss McGee know, but I thought that both of you knew that you have to go to the back of the property to get to the correct trailer oh okay. yeah she miss, miss uh mcgee just sent me the email i think you just left me off of it but yes right. where you did say that in the email so i've got that email now okay okay i believe we have Ms. sample uh the advocate uh guardian ad litem so, thank you Ms. sample you are the cost of the guardian ad litem for the child hb in this case is that correct that is correct okay the, the court is uh poised to reset uh the full adversary hearing so okay. in the meantime, um, do you believe that the current placement, I believe in a foster home, 
uh, is meeting all of HB's needs. Yes, sir, I do. He is growing and thriving, um, and he's just enjoying life there. Okay, is there, all right, thank you. Is there anything of which the court needs to be made aware um, in terms of um, the child, any needs uh, and or the placement? Not that I'm aware of, sir. Okay, have you had uh, any contact with either parent? Yes, sir. I um, have some text messages with mom. Okay. Um, and and uh, from when were those? I spoke to her, well, I texted with her shortly after getting the case. Um, I can be more specific here. Was it back in December, for example? I believe so. Um, let me pull up these text messages really quickly. Yes, sir. It was December. Okay. All right. December 27th, to be exact. All right. I'm going to defer any questions, if any, to, to the attorneys. So okay. I want to keep the, the issue relatively narrow here uh, before we uh, reset the matter. But uh, Ms. Dick, um, I'm going to start with Ms. McGee. Any questions of Ms. Sample? No questions. Not at this time, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, Ms. Moore. No questions, Dad. Thank you, Mr. Kirkwood, and then Ms. Dick. No questions at this time, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. Ms. Dick, any questions of Ms. Sample? Not at this time, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Bear with me just a moment. So, so um, every everything is set for nine, and there are, I believe there are nine cases, um, three status hearings, and then there is one trial, the Reyes matter, which I don't think any of you is on, uh, I don't believe. Um, so, thinking out loud um, in regards to the the time, is, bear with me. Is the um, Vasquez motion to modify, is that going to go? Judge, it is agreed. We have a, a full MSA. Is, is that to, to reinstate? Correct, Your Honor. And we and it also addresses the department's motion, uh, a petition for modification. So And it fully resolves all um, uh, issues, Judge. So you all have a, an actual mediated settlement agreement? Yes, Your Honor. No, oh, exciting. It is. <laughs> Smelling like Miss Croft. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, Judge, if, if I may, I'm sorry to interrupt. There. Mm -hmm without going into too much, but there are some issues as far as like the transfer, um, cause there was a prior order and then there might be some other child support issues, but the parties are aligned. So there won't be a contested hearing. Uh, there still might be a few housekeeping things that we're going to need to take care of. I'm hoping they're still going to be taken care of before the second, but I just want to let you know, Judge, it's the parties are aligned and it won't be contested. Okay. Well, that, that helps because it sounds like it, it, though most is agreed, it might be a little longer than 60 seconds. Right. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, let's see, Ms. Moore, how many cases, I'm seeing Mr. Kirkwood's name. How many cases do you have, Ms. Moore, on the uh, second? Well, I don't know, but if you'll give me a second, I can tell you. Well, I see you. You know what? One of the status hearings, um, that, just how the system does, uh, has the has this case set for a status hearing. So, um, yes, just that's one. the only that's the only one I see your name on at this point. Yeah, I don't have any on my calendar. That's why I just, if I'm on there right now, I don't, I don't, I didn't realize it. But yeah, Brown. It looks like that's the only one. Okay. What um, what I will, um, and let me know if there are any objections. I will uh, just uh, change that uh, setting 
from a status to um, a continuation of the adversary, uh, which is set at nine o'clock. And uh, if the parents are here, or if there is, or if there are affidavits of indigence to take up, I'll want to take that case um, uh, as early on in the docket as possible. We we might need to to come back to it, but I, I want to address those threshold threshold issues. Okay, all right. So with that. Uh, are there any objections to the emergency temporary orders uh, being extended to that date and time? No objection. No objection. All right, so the court uh, will hereby do that. Anything else from anyone else? No, okay. All right, well, thank you all uh, very much. We'll have a lot to address, uh, hopefully uh, on the second. And I will be um, scheduling that Zoom as soon as we log off and uh, we'll get it to Ms. Wallingford and Ms. Williams um, for that day's, um, for that docket's Zoom information. Okay. Hey, Judge, is it here. possible that I could make a request that any witnesses that are going to be called appear in person that day? I think it's a disadvantage for them to be on Zoom. Your Honor, we do, we may have some medical people at that hearing and they're not going to be able to appear in person. Well, I guess we could take that issue up, Crystal. I don't know if you want to. Well, I'm in. I'm inclined because, in as much as there was an agreement to do this hearing virtually, uh, I'm I'm inclined to to allow any experts or professionals to to appear, um, uh, to appear virtually. You know, it it might be it might be that that's the only way we're going to get y'all's client here. So I just don't know. I mean, that cuts both ways. Um. Yes, Your Honor. I I would like to um reserve the right to request that my client does appear virtually if she if she can, and also Judge, um, maybe Miss Boulier as well. Uh, but Judge, I don't know if, if it's a good time, if we should wait, but I, I, I am the attorney. Uh, when we proceed, Judge, I would be objecting to um, any of these expert witnesses, Your Honor, because they were not disclosed uh, to me um, time in a timely fashion. I did serve a 262.014 request upon the department, um, and these uh, witnesses were just disclosed at 4.56 p.m. yesterday. And uh, so Judge... Excuse me. Um, okay. And so, go ahead, Ms. McGee. Thank you, Your Honor. And um, Judge, my understanding of the code is that these um, they have to respond to my request before the adversary hearing starts. And so, Judge, I would object to any of these witnesses that she just disclosed on yesterday, Your Honor. Okay. Any any response? Um... Your Honor, there was a delay, and I. I did speak with Ms. McGee about that delay at the time, but um, at this point in time, based on the changes and how this hearing has gone, um, we did. I did amend my response and add additional witnesses because we have tried prior to the original hearing, we tried to get in contact and we were not able to contact the people that needed to be. And I know that it has been a period of time, but we have been trying for weeks to get in touch with the right people at the hospital. And I am asking that for the best interest of the child, that we be allowed to present the evidence that needs to be presented at this time. Um, I believe that um, we don't know if Ms. Bullier will show back up. She conveniently disappeared at the last hearing. And there is a lot of information that needs to get in at this point in time to protect the best interest of this child. Judge, may I? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead, Ms. McGee, and then Ms. Moore. Um, I think in addition to the fact that there are witnesses that are now being disclosed that 
the department should have known about, whether they could contact them or not, those witnesses should have been listed. But in addition, these are witnesses who aren't in the affidavit, who we don't know what information they have. We don't have the records or reports that they're going to be testifying from. All of that should have been turned over before the full adversary. So I would I would just join Ms. McGee's objection. Well, in, in terms, and let me see if Mr. Uh, Kirkwood has any uh, any response at this point, and then I'll go back to Ms. McGee. My only comment at this time, Judge, is that you would consider the best interest of the child. All right, thank you. Um, Ms. Dick and then Ms. McGee, or vice versa. Uh, yes, Your Honor, I just wanted to respond and clarify on one statement that Ms. Dick made that you spoke to me about her delayed um, response to my request. Yes, we did speak before the adversary hearing initially started. And at that time, she told me that her only witnesses were the, the from the department, which would not necessarily be need to be disclosed. And so at that time, I was not aware that she was calling anyone other than her department representatives. And so this was just newly made on yesterday. Um, and I believe that this response, again, Judge, is untimely because the adversary hearing has already started. And I would just add, Judge, that deadlines for discovery um, aren't contingent on what's in the best interest of a child. There's a very clear deadline for every case on discovery. So attorneys don't get to have the luxury of not complying with discovery and then not having a punishment for turning it over because of the best interest. If that were the case, there wouldn't be justice served in any case. Well, speaking uh, of the language, um, the language in 262.014, um, I'm, I might give you an opportunity to turn to that. How would, um, how would you all interpret the language um, before the full adversary hearing? And Your Honor, I would say that we have not had the full adversary hearing yet. It has started and stopped. And I am, I did explain to Ms. McGee at the time that I'd had some health issues that had slowed me down in getting things done. And I did try, I made every effort to get in touch with the hospital and to locate the different people that I needed to have. And I even responded just to, I didn't have anything right at that moment. And that's why I amended my response. Is, um, is the department in possession of these uh, requested uh, documents uh, in order to supplement? Um, the things that I sent in terms of documentation were the um, drug test at the hospital. I sent um, copies of the text messages with um, the mother and the supervisor of the department. And I sent a copy which we were able to locate finally yesterday of the um, indictment on, for one of the possible placements um, and a copy of the termination order. Just And I'm not sure that that got sent until this morning, but it was just the last termination order um, that we had um, on the on Raiden Brown, the last case. Right. Are there are there doctors uh, or nurses whom you plan to call, and what's the status of the medical records? We're still waiting for the medical records. We were finally told yesterday of a different location that they had to go to. I mean that our request had to go to, and the doctor. I've not been able to speak to him in person, but I did put him down. Um, we had uh, timely, sir. Um, what was was his name timely included in the list of witnesses? It wasn't. I wasn't able to reach anyone that had any real knowledge of the case or information until the last day or so. It's been very difficult to get information. If I might um, add something, Your Honor. Um, you thank you, Judge. Uh, I just wanted to um, state, I do. I did receive uh, some text messages 
um, in an indictment. However, I do not have any any records from the hospital, any drug test or or anything. So I don't know if that just got left off, but I don't have any medical records, anything um, in regards to these two other uh, medical witnesses. I don't have any records in regards to their testimony. Recording in progress. Sorry, Sorry. Judge. I don't, I don't, uh, my computer's messed up. Can you just mute me on this other one? Okay. Did I did I mute the right one? I don't know. I can't. Is, is there feedback? No, there's not. Not this time. Okay. Sorry. I also did not receive. I don't. I don't know. I hope that you were done. <laughs> yeah, I kind of got confused when I logged in and had all the noise. But I also didn't receive the any drug test results. Um, as to your question about the full adversary hearing language, I have two comments. When you look at the adversary hearing statute, it's also called full adversary hearing. Correct. So I think if they were it, meaning for it to be turned over before the whole hearing was had, then it would kind of defeat the purpose of them having to turn it over at all because they could literally turn it over right before closing arguments when everybody's rested. I think the spirit and what that means is before the start of the full adversary hearing, full adversary hearing, meaning what we call adversary hearing. I don't think it's meant for extra things to be disclosed throughout. All right, thank you, Ms. Moore. Any anything else on that um, that issue? I would simply argue that the department is making every effort to comply with the um, motions and everything else. Uh, the motion that was filed, and based on our efforts, you know we have made every effort to get the medical information and have not been able to get the medical information. So I'm asking for the best interest of the child that this be allowed to go forward in the way that, so that evidence could be properly presented and they don't have clients present and their primary witness was not available for testimony after a very short period of time. So we're, we All may right. have to subpoena well, her as well. You, you all, I will, uh, of course, leave it to you all to do um, your, everyone to do their due diligence. And I will take this up uh, when we are back uh, together uh, on uh, the second. So a week from Friday. All right. So uh, the adversary, again, um, full adversary is uh, continued to Friday, December the 2nd uh, at 9 a.m., Sorry, um, February the 2nd, February the 2nd, 2024, 9 a.m. All right, so again, again the court has extended uh, the emergency temporary orders uh, to that date and time. Okay, any anything else from anyone else? Okay. All right. All right, thank you all very much. Uh, we are... Um, you are excused. Uh, have a great rest of your week. Uh, try to stay high and dry, and we'll see you again uh, February the 2nd at 9 a.m.